sometimes, but he also writes. I mean, that's that's incredible. It's sort of like uh, patting your head and wrecking your <laughs> stomach at the same time. His short stories have appeared in print and online. You've got this text, so I don't need to read it, but he's got a book and it's back here called Not Everyone is Special. And um, he plays drums in the band. Brisking. 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 God. And KUTX called it synth punk gloom wonders. So I think you need to welcome Josh Denslow. I've read here before, but I've never had a microphone. This is so cool. They used to let me have a microphone in the band, but then they took it away from me. Oh, no. <clears throat> they used to turn my guitar down. Yeah, see? Yeah. There you go. That's what it was. You know what it was? I was talking too much between the songs. That's what I took the microphone. All right. Um, so we got the reconciliation uh, theme. And I had a story I was actually working on recently that fit really well, but it was too long. So. I decided to go back through some of the stuff and see where I could find that theme. And so um, I have a really short one in the collection that's over there. And it's kind of, I hope I'm not stretching to hit the theme, but it's kind of like reconciling with yourself. Um, it's called My Particular Tumor. <clears throat> I feel like I'm really loud. Am I not really loud? Okay. Okay. The most interesting thing about me is that I shared my mother's womb with a tumor for three months. I was scheduled to die upon its removal, but I persevered. Persevered equals stuck with it. The second most interesting thing about me is that every morning I write a sentence about my life in a spiral-bound journal using the word of the day. The word arrives via email from Merriam-Webster Dictionary online, along with a definition in the part of speech. Via is a fancy way to say bye. When tumors are removed, they are dumped in the trash to ponder what they did wrong. My particular tumor may have wondered why I didn't go with it. We were pretty tight. An interesting fact about tumors is that they only come in two types, benign or malignant. Benign is a house guest. Malignant burns your house down and takes you with it. My particular tumor didn't spit in the brownies he made in home, home economics class in eighth grade and give them to Charlie Kirkpatrick, who promptly ate them. Promptly equals immediately. My particular tumor didn't break up with his girlfriend for the weekend he went to Breckenridge with his friends, so he wouldn't feel guilty if he hooked up with a girl. My particular tumor didn't squander all of the money his dad left him when he died. My particular tumor didn't take his girlfriend for granted and desperately asked her to marry him when she moved on 10 years later. My particular tumor didn't spend the last few years growing bald and watching TV and shunning outside contact. Another interesting thing about tumors is that they are actually called neoplasms. Tumor is the Latin word for swelling, and the tumor in my mother's womb would have kept growing until I was suffocating. <laughs> to mitigate the pain, the doctor told my mom there was a small chance I would make it through the surgery. Mitigate equals to give false hope. When I die, I want to know if anyone says anything nice about me. In fact, I'm obsessed with it. Another interesting thing about me is that I'm constantly thinking of ways to fake my own death. The younger you are when you die, the nicer the things they say about you. But that's because they never truly got to know you. <coughs> my particular tumor probably wondered why I didn't die like I was supposed to. I lie in bed and listen to the clanking of the ice maker and the gentle shuffle of feet above me. When the light goes out on the gas station sign across the street, my room is plunged into darkness. I associate the word plunge with knives. I pull my blanket over my head so my eyes don't adjust, and I breathe heavily as my body heat swirls around me. There's plenty of room for someone else in here. That's, that's uh, my particular tumor. <laughs> Sorry, I felt like I was really good giving you all the dry mouth while I was reading. <clears throat> all right. 
So the other one is not in the book. This comes from a series I've been working on that uh, they all revolve around a couple breaking up and a magical creature. And um, yeah, this one's called Ash. <clears throat> I didn't mean to cheat on Sarah. First she had the flu for two weeks, and then she left on a trip. Next thing I knew, I hadn't seen her in a month. That's when I ran into my ex-girlfriend Carla at the grocery store. Thing is, I forgot Sarah and Carla knew each other. When Sarah got back from her trip, I immediately went to explain myself, but she'd hired one of those vicious green dragons to perch on the roof of her craftsman house. I felt confident I could have talked my way past the red one, but the green ones were notorious for not listening to reason. The one Sarah had hired was smaller than others I'd seen, but his wings still reached the ground. He cradled the house like an egg. His mean little eyes scanned the neighborhood and smoke puffed from his nose. I parked across the street and took a deep breath. I'd heard the trick to getting past the dragon as to hide your fear. I walked towards Sarah's door with my shoulders back and my head down, which was actually sort of uncomfortable. Halt! The dragon said in a booming voice. His claws ripped the roof in the exact spot where Sarah and I had sat the first time she'd invited me to her house. We'd climbed out of her bedroom window and lay there watching the stars and the occasional dragon soaring past. We didn't kiss or anything. It was sort of wonderful. The green dragon craned his reptilian head down to me and sniffed the air. Then something that sounded like a laugh belched out of him with a plume of smoke. Holy shit, man, he said. She told me you show up, but I didn't believe it. Did you not see me up here? I saw you, I said. My orders are to turn you into a pitiful pile of ash the moment you step into the yard. Then she wants to sweep you up and mail you to Carla with a note that says, he's all yours. I gulped. It didn't seem like Sarah to go for the burning death option. And here you are, in her yard, he said. Flames danced gleefully in his nostrils. I wanted to apologize, I said, but I'll leave. You don't even have to say I was here. I promise, I won't come back. The dragon thought about it. I'm, I'm curious about what this apology would have sounded like. I mean, you did nail one of her friends. They aren't that good of friends, I said. I, I used to date Carla. So that makes it okay? This wasn't how it was supposed to go down. I, I wanted to tell Sarah that I missed her, that she smelled like everything nice in the world, that the guy who the... <clears throat> that the guy who'd hooked up with Carla wasn't the real me. It was the opposite of okay, I said. I'm gonna throw this out there. Your apology is total garbage, the dragon said. It's like you don't know Sarah has feelings. I know she has feelings, I said. Just before she'd gotten sick, I'd taken her to see a movie, and she'd cried when the main character's dog died. I'd given her our last clean napkin and put my arm around her. I could still feel her, feel her head there now, her cheek pressed into the fleshy part of my chest. We're at an impasse, the dragon said. I'm supposed to char your ass, but I imagine you want to live long enough to screw over some other girl. So I'll make a deal with you. Convince me that you're sorry, and I'll let you go. Don't convince me, and well, you know what happens. He stretched his wings out to the side and shook them before tucking them into his scaly back. I squeezed my eyes closed. When I feel like I'm getting too close to someone, I do something to push them away. Cliché, the dragon war roared. I held my breath and waited for the cascade of fire. Besides, Sarah said you guys hadn't grown all that close yet. She said that? I thought we'd had something special. There were times when I was with Sarah that I felt content, like we'd never climbed down from her roof. Smoke steamed from the dragon's mouth. She said you were never, and I quote, real with her. That really got me. You tell her that I never thought she was real with me. What was I supposed to think when she had the flu and wouldn't let me see her? Isn't the point of a relationship to see each other at our best and worst times? I could have brought her soup or rubbed her feet. I don't know. It's not like I ever wanted to be with someone who had the flu before. Then she didn't see me before she left on her trip. Did she stop to think how I felt? The dragon stared, but since he wasn't murdering me yet, I kept going. It was terrible. I was thinking about her when I was doing other things. I found myself driving by her house and going over our past conversations, looking for clues. I hated her for making me feel that way. This isn't an apology. 
It kind of is, I said. It's getting there. I've heard enough, the dragon said. I'll give you a five second lead. He immediately started counting, and it wasn't until he got to two that I finally turned and ran for my car. Five, the dragon yelled as I was pulling open my door. I received third degree burns on my back and shoulders, but I lived. I drove myself to the hospital with my skin melting to the sea. Even in indescribable pain, all I could think was how after a few weeks in the hospital, I would have another chance to make things right with Sarah. Thanks. <clears throat> Well, well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Allison. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, hearing me. And who's next? Are you next? Okay, awesome.